嗨，大家好，我是前生，欢迎收看我们的《The K Lady 实况》第九回。嗯、呃，上次我有跟大家讲过，这一回主要就是我们的书山大神会跟 Missy 展开一个非常长、非常长，大概长达十个世纪的对话。那我们现在就开始吧。嘿。Again, let's get that bottle open. Yeah, but we'll need glasses too. See if you can find some. I found some wine glasses. All right, that's all we need. Oh, and Miss Ashworth, I really must say this before we start. Yeah. I promise I won't cut your throat when you're asleep. Very funny, <laughs> Mitzi. Oh no, I mean it. That's fine, but just so you know, I always sleep with my eyes open. 最好是。刚刚那个书山大，我们家的书山大婶真是越来越幽默了。那我们现在来跟 Mitzi 对话吧。So the big C want to talk about it? Well, to be honest. I didn't really want to tell you about it like that. I put you in a very difficult position. I know. It's just that I was really desperate to get this room. I hope you can understand. This is the last and most important thing I must do before my time is up. It's fine. You seem all right. It's just I find it hard to trust people these days. Maybe it's time I opened my eyes to see others have problems too. Some, like yourself, even bigger than mine. What kind of cancer is it? Do you mind me asking? Brain tumor. Her name is glioblastoma. Huh. Yep, they're all girls, the way I imagine it. Just look at their names: lymphoma, melanoma, myeloma, leukemia, sarcoma. Each of them a fucking goddess of death. Beautiful and ruthless. Hmm. You might just be right about that, Mitzi. I used to be a nurse. I know a few things about cancer. And I know glioblastoma. She's a real bitch. Yeah. And yet she gets to be the prom queen before night ends, while I disappear down the back exit. How long? They said I had a year. But that was six months ago. So. Yeah, not awfully long. Is there anything? They've tried. I'm sorry. Yeah. So am I. Do you want to talk about something else? How are you planning to find this guy? I don't know yet. A bit of detective work, perhaps. It shouldn't be that hard, really. There are only eight apartments here. One is yours. That leaves us with seven. I was hoping that you could give me a hand, actually. You know some of your neighbors, don't you? Not many. I never really cared about them. They changed over the years too. You probably also figured by now that this is not the sort of place where new neighbors are greeted with a freshly baked cake. You see a new face. You give them a blank stare as you pass them in the hall. And you forget about them a minute later. That bad, eh? Well, there's that bull guy who lives above me in flat five. He came here recently to shout in my face. He's a nasty piece of work, but I really don't think he's the person you're looking for. What does he do for a living? I think he's a train driver. I can't imagine somehow that my guy would be a train driver. Okay, that's good. Leaves us with just six. Anyone else you know? I'd have to think. You know, maybe not tonight. Let's just talk about something else, okay? I have plenty of time. There's no need to rush this. Maybe tomorrow we could sit down together and make a plan. I could draw a simple map of the building, and with your help, mark down who lives where. Sounds good to me, Mitzi. Oh, it's not raining anymore. Oh well, I don't mind rain. 
Sometimes I even like it. But according to weather forecast, there's a nasty fog coming. Now that, I'm actually scared of. I got lost in a fog once, when I was just nine or ten. I remember I sat under a tree crying, thinking some monster would appear right in front of me and drag me away. But now that you're a big girl, you know there are no monsters. Yeah? How do you know? The only monsters are us. Murderers, rapists, arsonists. They're the real beasts. So far from humanity, they're no longer capable of feeling compassion or guilt. They're the ones we should really be afraid of. But whether they're lurking in the woods or fog or the darkness of our cellars, it's all irrelevant. You can't predict what happens. You can't do anything to stop it. There is only one way. You turn into a beast yourself. And like them, you show no mercy. Whoa! Where did that come from, Miss Ashworth? I just don't like murderers. They're nothing but... Parasites. You mentioned a boyfriend. Tell me something about him. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about him. His name is Jack. He's dead. Oh. Miss Ashworth, are you sure you want to listen about my miserable life? I don't want to bring you down. These aren't happy stories. And I'm not a happy stories kind of person. I'm sure you've noticed by now. I guess so. Anyway, I suppose I would have had to tell you about Jack sooner or later. After all, he is the main reason I'm here. I just... don't know where to start. Tell me how you two met. Oh, we knew each other for like, forever. We grew up on the same street. It's funny how we seem to be made for each other. Perfect match. I always knew he was the guy for me, and I'm sure he never doubted that either. Jack was absolutely crazy about me. We thought one day we would marry, have children, be happy. I never had many friends because I had Jack. I didn't need anybody else. You know, if there's one thing I'm really grateful for in my life, it's that I got to experience this pure, perfect love. Some people go through a lifetime without knowing how it feels. I guess I've been very lucky. But all luck runs out sometimes. How did he take the news about your cancer? He thought I was joking at first. He laughed. And he got really angry. I swore to him I was serious, but he still wouldn't believe me. We had a big fight that night. It was our first and only fight. But it was awful. He smashed some stuff. His guitar, of all things, was the worst. He loved that guitar. Why did he break it? He was absolutely furious. He walked out on me that night, and when he came back the next day, he was different. He begged me to try surgery and chemotherapy. I didn't really want those things, but I did the chemo for him. It didn't help. It just made me feel sick all the time. I felt trapped in this strange place where nothing that happened around me seemed real. Maybe that's why I didn't see what my cancer was doing to Jack, and it was destroying him as well. He changed. He became obsessed with death. It seemed death was all he ever thought about, even though it was me, not him, who was supposed to die. Jack made those pictures on your wall. Was he an artist? He always liked all kinds of morbid stuff, whether it was music, movies, paintings. So do I, really. We had that in common, amongst other things. People say it's depressing to listen to sad songs or watch sad films. But I never felt that way. And yet, you are scared of fog. Oh, that's different. I might be scared of fog, but I like spiders. They're beautiful. 
You must be out of your mind, Mitzi. No, honestly, there is a certain indescribable beauty in sadness. Just like there's beauty in the grey and ugly winter morning when you look past the obvious and notice what others can't see. You must love my apartment, then. It's like ugly took a vacation here and never went home again. How did he die? How did Jack die? It was so distant in the last few weeks before. Before he died. What I didn't know was that he kept looking for something. I don't think he even knew what exactly. But it eventually found him. Or rather, he found him. There are those forums online, you know, about all sorts of stuff. Fishing, computer games, horses, gambling, addictions, everything really. Accidentally, Jack stumbled upon one about suicide. There's a guy there, calls himself the Eye of Adam. He's a fucking god on that forum. It's like a failed suicide club. People mostly try to help each other and offer support. Sometimes it just helps to know there are others like you. To listen to their stories and, and how they cope with their lives. But the Eye of Adam is an advocate of death. He dwells on human weakness. His job is to plant an idea. To give them a reason to die and tell them how to do it. Once and for good. Jack took the bait. Before he knew, he was completely brainwashed. One day, he sat down with me and tried to explain his perfect solution. It was the Romeo and Juliet kind of scenario. We were both to die together in each other's arms. It was supposed to be a quick and foolproof death. There was no chance we would have been saved. All thanks to the Eye of Adam, who created a tool for perfect suicide. He told me it was very simple. All we needed were two easily accessible household chemicals which combine together create gas called hydrogen sulfide that kills you within a couple of minutes. I told him he was fucking nuts, of course, but he just wouldn't give up. He reasoned with me, then he begged, and eventually just kept screaming at me. I figured it was his crazy idea of a modern romance, but it was downright tacky and just wrong. Finally, he said he would get everything ready and wait for me in our special place at dawn. Five in the morning. Don't be late. Those were his last words he said to me. Then he stormed out. I cried for hours, thinking I, I didn't deserve all that from the person I loved most in the whole world. A few times I even tried to persuade myself that maybe he was right and I should do it. But I just couldn't. I eventually fell asleep. I didn't plan it. My head was killing me. I was so tired. I woke up suddenly. I could see the sun rising out my window. It was nearly five. In utter panic, I threw myself off the bed and ran out the door. I needed to stop him. I needed to get there before it was too late. But right there in my bedroom, before I even left, When I arrived at our special place, it was already bright. We used to go there in the past, drink wine, sometimes smoke weed and listen to Pink Floyd, sometimes make love in Jack's car. There wasn't really anything special about that old parking lot, but to us there was. It was completely abandoned. It was quiet. It was safe. After that day, I've never gone there again. Okay, we're now starting to do Mitzi.
there were signs on the car windows. Warning signs, yeah. I found on that form that the Eye of Adam doesn't want any accidental deaths. So we posted this poster design for people to print. It turns out there's a whole sick ideology behind it. Fumes from the car could hurt anyone who opens the door, and that's not the point. The idea is to die willingly and with clear mind, to prepare for it, to embrace it. Jesus. You'd think the police would investigate the whole thing. It sounds almost like a sect. This guy knows how to hide. The police can't be bothered to make an effort. It took me three months to track him down. Now I'm finally so close, I can almost smell that fucker. How strong is that gas? Extremely deadly, it turns out. It kills in minutes. It's that stinky stuff that smells like rotten eggs, you know? At high concentrations, it can knock down an elephant. I'm so sorry. I think now I understand. He loved you so much, he couldn't bear the thought of living without you. And that guy, the Eye of Adam. I'm not surprised you want to find him. I know I would. I'm not sure if I should believe that you only want to talk to him. But hey, that's none of my business. I wouldn't know what I'd do if this happened to me. Good to know, but I really just want to talk. I want to face Jack's killer and tell him what he's done to me. You know, the funny part is that he actually told me where he lives. He wants to meet me. Would you believe that? How come? Well, this kind of thing he does is called trolling on the internet. It's usually a form of extreme bullying and psychological cruelty. Those who are clever enough say, don't beat the troll. Don't talk to them. It, it only makes it worse if you show any interest in them at all. And I of Adam is no exception. He craves attention. He's a hungry troll who wants to devour as many hearts as he can get a hold of. I emailed him and told him I was a massive fan who loves his work. He wouldn't believe me at first. But trolls are always hungry, and I was prepared to serve him a meal fit for a king. What do you mean? I fed him so much bullshit that he really believed I'm a suicide preacher just like him. Great. I wish he'd given you his door number, though. It's all a part of some sick game he's playing. Sooner or later, I'll find him. What are those two chemical products? Well, I... I'm not sure if you want to know that. I get it. You don't want to tell me because I'm a fucking suicidal maniac. Is that it? No, Ms. Ashworth. No, I, I didn't mean it like that. Okay. Maybe to some extent. Just replace maniac with victim and fucking with... Recovery. You've only just come back from the hospital. Whatever it was that made you do it, you proved you are capable of going through with it. I don't know you long enough to tell you if you're completely over it now. And the last thing I want is to give you stupid ideas. It would be just like what the Eye of Adam does. I would never forgive myself if anything happened to you because of me. I mean, how could I? I've learnt my lesson. Dying is not for me. I'd really like to believe you, Miss Ashworth. But I will need you to promise me that you will never try this method. Alright. I can promise you that I will never try this method. Or any other method, for that matter. Been there, done that. Didn't enjoy it much. Do you believe me now? Yeah. I think I do. Good. I'm glad you said that, you know. The recipe for this deadly cocktail is very simple. Any good housewife can make it in a blast. Home,现在那个长颈一转又回到这个苏珊大神被两个变态抓来的这个杀人地下室。刚刚那个苏珊大神跟妹子有定下约定说他不会再尝试自杀。这个也就是解释为什么上一回苏珊大神在苏珊大神重开机也黑的时候会跟梅子道歉说抱歉他没办法遵守约定就是这样子来的
。那我们下一回就是开心的复仇时光了，也可以。那我们的今天的实况就先到这里为止，那我们下次再见啦，拜拜。